Bose, one of the most recognizable brands in home audio, is either loved or hated. And that has never been more apparent to me than after reading all the comments on my original Bose Exposed video. People either love or hate Bose. But the one thing reading those comments and doing more digging taught me, it's that the controversy and conspiracy behind Bose goes much deeper than I originally thought. This is a video that I produced for you, but more importantly, everything in this video is by you the viewer. So to all of our viewers, thank you for contributing and continue to do so in this video and in others in the future. Spam the comments with your opinions because unlike many other channels, we want you to be part of this one. Bose, who was once known during the 1970s and the 1980s for their unique speaker lines and even receivers, is now selling only lifestyle products, such as headphones, Bluetooth speakers, soundbars, and even sunglasses. But while the majority of people relate Bose's name to a high-quality product, like Apple for example, the majority of audiophiles hate Bose. In the 1970s and the 1980s, all Bose dealers would be required to have a dedicated area in their store for Bose products. And on top of that, Bose dealers were banned for life if they didn't follow every single regulation put in place by the corporation. First being, it was a mandatory rule that they didn't want their speakers placed next to or even compared to any other brands of speakers. Could this be because they didn't want their consumer to pick a better speaker over theirs, or just that they wanted to be perceived as a brand in its own class that shouldn't be mixed in with lesser products. Bose would not allow dealers to do any A-B demos at all. Any dealers who would place speakers outside the dedicated room or perform those A-B speaker demos would be completely cut off by Bose. If a store was cut off, they would be stuck with all of their inventory and drop prices so low that they can barely make up the cost of the products. As a high by store owner, it would be a nightmare to have systems and not be able to demo various speakers to give the customer their best options. One of our viewers who was able to secretly mix in Bose with other products said, I remember when Bose created separated demo display areas and stores away from the retailer's showrooms. To focus on the marketing message and to lessen the chance of direct AB comparisons with other brands. Now I've never had so many comments in a video on different acronyms that a company stands for and of course the company is Amar Bose's last name, but you guys came up with some wild stuff in the comments, and I'd love to know which one of these are your favorites, so spam the comments of this video with your favorite acronyms. So here's what our viewer said. Bloody ordinary sound equipment. Bring other sound equipment, or buy other sound equipment. Better off with something else. Or even better off selling everything. So one of our viewers even had the subtitles turned on on our video and said every time I said Bose, it came through as booze. There were also famous phrases that describe Bose. One of our viewers said the Bose AM5 Acoustamass was known as the Acoustamass. And of course, no highs, no lows, it must be Bose. Or no highs, no lows, when it blows, you know it's Bose. Now, some would even say Bose actually stood for better sound through litigation. Rumor has it that it is widely known from people in the industry that Bose had more lawyers than engineers. And no case would this ring more true than in Bose versus the Consumer Union, a case that would end up in the Supreme Court. The magazine Consumer Reports had published in 1970 a review of an unusual loudspeaker system manufactured by the Bose Corporation called the Bose. 901. The review expressed skepticism of the system's quality and recommended that consumers delay purchase until they had investigated for themselves whether the loudspeaker system's unusual attributes would suit them. Bose objected to numerous statements in this article, including the sentences, Worse, individual instruments heard through the Bose system seem to grow to gigantic proportions and tended to wander around the room. For instance, a violin appeared to be 10 feet wide and a piano stretched from wall to wall. Bose demanded a retraction when they learned that Consumer Reports changed what the original reviewer wrote about the speakers in his pre-publication draft, which the magazine refused to do. 
The New York Times featured an article that said, because Consumer Reports wrote this, the Massachusetts District Court ordered the magazine to pay the manufacturer $210,000 in damages. What it should have written according to the federal judge who heard the case was that the sounds moved along the wall. That would have been a high price to pay for imprecise language and a mighty tax on free expression generally. Fortunately, the Supreme Court has reaffirmed free speech values by ruling that the price need not be paid. Justice John Paul Stevens wrote for the court, The difference between hearing violin sounds move around the room and hearing them wander back and forth fits easily within the breathing space that gives life to the First Amendment. If Bose was injured, the cure lies not in off-the-wall legal opinions, but in a multiplicity of free speakers. One of our viewers even said, Bose, if you can't build a better product, sue. Bose, to me, was always known for their bait-and-switch demos. Going into a store, you heard one thing, and when you got it home, you heard another. Or if you were like some of our viewers, maybe you saw the tactics firsthand. Oh, I remember setting up so many Bose Acousta-Mass speaker systems for home theater customers. It always pained me greatly to have to look the customer in the face while outright lying to them about how wonderful their new overpriced system sounded. It was complete and utter junk. I remember going into a Bose brick and mortar store and sitting through one of their presentations where you're going to a room to hear this phenomenal sound coming from these great looking speakers. And then what they do is lift those great looking speakers up in the air to show these little cubes which are actually producing the sound. Then of course a sales rep would try to sell you a five thousand dollar acoustic mass system that if i bought it would replace the two thousand dollar system i already had that sounded terrific now we know those rooms were actually heavily equalized and acoustically treated in order to get that sound in 1970 me and a friend went to a consumer products hi-fi show and went to the bose room and after the demonstration we asked if we could turn up the volume on them and he wouldn't do it. So we went back after everybody left and turned on the tape he was playing, slowly turning up the volume, and those things sounded like they were going to explode. Just distorted all over the place and sounding terrible. My Acoustamass subwoofer caught on fire 10 years ago. The recall on those subs for a 40% off discount on a new system is actually some brilliant marketing. You can bet the margins on those new Bose speakers are high enough that even with the trade-in, Bose is making a hell the profit. Product safety recalls usually result in millions of dollars of company losses, not opportunities to make more money. I worked at a Bose store and noticed that their wave radios were always demoing on a hollow pedestal. They are creating an illusion of deeper bass. It never sounded the same way when you played them at home. I recall my old sound rooms and having 301s, 501s, 601s, comparing them to other brands, and as a serious pro and enthusiast of good audio, those speakers actually did sound good, compared well to other marquee brands we had in the rooms. Bose does know how to build a good product, but the insane profit margins and ease of manufacturing of the Acoustamass line just really completely diverted the company away from what we call hi-fi. Now we heard a lot of comments and thoughts and acronyms of those from you, the viewers, but if you didn't make this video, be sure to leave another comment. Let me know what your thoughts on Bose are. You know YouTube already knows what video you want to watch next. Well, it's this one right here. So if you like the video you just watched, you're absolutely going to love this one.